You're welcome back. Um, we're now going to bring you something else. And we're talking about uh, inflation and how high interest rates spike, uh, spike sales and rents by 40% in major cities. In fact, in Lagos State, is more or less like uh, 300%. Uh, I know of someone very close to me who lived in a house that he used to pay 400,000 and just uh, about May this year or April this year, the landlord came and said it has to be 600,000 from, from 200 to 600,000. And they were just begging for uh, this rent to be at 400,000 from 200,000. That means it's a 100% increase, not 40. So if in some cities it's 40%, then well, that city is still a very, very good city. But in Lagos State, so many landlords have increased it 100%, and that is worrisome. So it's, uh, interest rates and so many other things are going up and up and up. And to discuss this with me is uh, Mr. Nick Agule, Public Affairs Analyst. Good morning, and welcome to the program, Mr. Agule. Good morning and welcome, Mr. Agu. Good morning and good morning to our viewers. Okay. Yeah, so uh, now we're looking at inflation, high interest rates, and we're looking at the fact that rents have gone up 40%. This is the official figure of 40%, but practically it's more than that. And so many other things are going up. Let's take your, your, your thoughts on what is happening, inflation, and especially high interest rates in Nigeria. Will that take us somewhere better or it is taking us somewhere backwards? I thank you very much uh, for that question. Uh, that there will be inflation in Nigeria is expected. Expected because of the policies that have been embarked upon by the current government. Every step that this government has taken is inflationary, or we have negative impact on inflation. Number one, the government increased the price of petrol from 180, 190 to 600 plus today. That's inflationary. That is going to cause inflation in the country because petrol impacts on so many things in this country. Number two, government floats the Naira, meaning the official exchange rate of the Naira moves from about 450 there about to 800, even try to touch a thousand or touch a thousand, and it's floating at around that 800 mark now. That is inflationary because Nigeria's economy is heavily import dependent. And if the cost of the dollar rises by such quantum, you will expect that the price of the imported goods that we bring into Nigeria are going to rise. Government, uh, under the Central Bank of Nigeria, increased the monetary policy rate to 18.75%. That is also inflationary because uh, businesses that assess credit will experience an increase in their interest cost. And they are going to try to transfer this extra cost and interest into the, into the prices of the goods and services that they produce. So that is also inflationary. So you can see that uh, so far, everything uh, that this government is doing uh, is inflationary, uh, is causing a negative impact on inflation. And so it's not surprising that the housing sector is experiencing uh, inflationary pressures. Like I said, will it, will it lead to a better Nigeria or is it taking us backwards? Because the government that is doing all these uh, things they are telling us that they are taking us to a better place. Do you believe that? There is nowhere in the world that inflation takes anybody to a better place. 
And that is why central banks across the world, once they see that their economies are facing inflationary pressures, they begin to take action to deal with that. Because the, the inflation is like a cancer, you know, because if you are paying a worker today 30,000 minimum wage, and the 30,000 can buy them uh, a bag of rice, if you still pay them the 30,000 next month, and a bag of rice increases in price from 30,000 to 45,000, then that worker isn't going to, to be able to buy a bag of rice again. He can only buy probably a half a bag of rice. So that is the impact of inflation. It eats into the purchasing power. It brings poverty. Because the money that people have cannot fetch for them again the goods and services that it was commanding. So inflation is a bad thing. And for any responsible government, once they see inflation, they have to start taking actions to deal with the inflation. Unfortunately, the Nigerian government so far, they've been in office from May to death. They have taken all the actions that have been increasing the inflation, but they haven't taken any action whatsoever that will deal with the inflation. Because to deal with the inflation, you have to understand what is the cost of this inflation. You know, our Nigerian government approach to dealing with inflation under the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria is to hike the interest rate. You see, that is the medicine for demand pool inflation. Because in demand pool inflation, the people have a lot of money. Money is floating in the economy, you know, and you want to mop up the money from the economy so that the, the, the people will demand for less goods and services. And uh, by increasing the interest rate, it will attract them to go and uh, deposit money in the bank so that they can earn a high interest rate and that curtails demand. So that's how you deal with uh, demand pool inflation, by increasing interest rates. But Nigeria's inflation is cost push inflation. Nigeria's inflation is not demand uh, pool inflation because if you look at it, in Nigeria, only a few people have money. The vast majority of Nigerians don't have money. Today, we have millions of graduates, for instance. They've uh, gone to school, they burnt the midnight candle, they are out, they are, but they cannot get jobs. They don't even have jobs to, to work at any living. And a lot of people who are even working, there are not any good wages that can even take them home. But there are a few people in Nigeria who have a lot of money. They don't go to the market always. So you can see that the inflation in Nigeria is not demand pool inflation. It's cost push. Cost push in the sense that if the cost of input into the manufacturing sector is rising, the manufacturing sector will try to push the extra cost into the prices of goods and services. And you can see that if, uh, because a lot of manufacturers in Nigeria are importing their input, they are importing their spares and all of that, this uh, exchange rate uh, depreciation is what has now led them to increase prices of goods and services. In the same way, even the interest rate that the central bank is inc increasing is inflationary on its own. Because when you increase interest rates, the, those who were accessing credit to manufacture, because the credit is now more expensive, they will transfer, they will attempt to transfer the cost of the, the extra interest charges into the prices of goods and services. So you can see that in Nigeria, because the inflation is cost push, the government should rather be dealing with what are the causative factors that are leading to this increase in cost of goods and services and not about increasing rates. And the causative factors are there. The first causative factor is electricity. If you don't give enough electricity to the economy, the manufacturers are now using generators. And you know, you, you are, if you are burning generator at a diesel cost of 800 naira or so, that is very expensive. Actually, it's not sustainable. And that is why over time, as we continue to give 3,000 megawatts to an economy that ideally needs 200,000 megawatts, a lot of manufacturers are closing shop and leaving Nigeria. We recently had a case of GSK and all of that. They can catch the reason why they are living in diplomatic terms. But you know that the environment to do business is very bad. So government should have been quickly dealing with the causative factors. What are they doing about refineries? What are they doing about electricity? What are they doing about high interest uh, costs? You see, the, the, the president in his inaugural speech 
on the 29th of May, he identified a high interest rate as being inimical to economic development. And he said he's going to do something about it. But unfortunately, his government, the central bank had a monetary policy committee meeting and increased the interest rate. The president didn't say anything about it. So until we deal with the causative factors of inflation, we're not going to cure it. Interest rate hike will not cure the inflation in Nigeria because it's not demand pool inflation. Thing, one of the, of the factors we uh, mentioned in this topic is uh, the rents that have gone up. Not just the goods and services out there, but the rents have gone up so much. And some people are saying there need to be some kind of regulation for, uh, for rents, for accommodation, for uh, whatever, wherever people live. And it seems to be working in other countries, but in Nigeria, there's no form of regulation at all. Uh, it is left in the hands of the omoniles and all the people that give you houses and charge you exorbitantly. Uh, apart from just paying your, your rents, you still have to pay agency agreement, damages, and all that. And that runs into a lot of money and all. So what do you suggest be done in, in terms of accommodation, in terms of rents, how can the government step in so that the people don't stay homeless? Because right now, a lot of people, their options are either you go to, for instance, in Lagos, you go to Ogun State or any other neighboring villages to live and be coming to work in Lagos, which is also very stressful for anybody that needs to work in Lagos State. So what kind of regulation can the government give in that sector? I will not support the government to regulate the rent that landlords are collecting. Because any time the government attempts to regulate the price of a product, you see racketeering. That is what government attempted to do all these years with petrol price. They try to regulate the price of petrol. And once you start to regulate the price of a product, you are not going to attract investment into that sector. What you do is to allow the sector to play out. There is high rent now because the supply of housing in Nigeria is way, way too low compared to our population of 200 million people. There are not enough housing. So what government should be doing is to take action to increase the number of houses available for people to rent in Nigeria. And there are a, a number of measures they can take. Number one, we're talking about interest rate. If you want to take a mortgage today, your interest rate is going to be topping 25%, 30%. Who takes such a mortgage? Ordinary elsewhere, mortgage is not more than 5%. It is not more than 5% interest rate. So if the government takes the step to say, for, 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 for mortgage purposes, or for housing, for building of houses, Banks are not supposed to uh, charge interest rates of more than 5%. That will have better impact than trying to regulate the price of getting a house, which is the rent. You see, there is a problem in Nigeria. You know what the problem in Nigeria is? The banks in Nigeria are having a fee day. Because elsewhere, in any, any economy, it is the banks that are the catalyst of the economy. Because the banks are the ones that supply cheap credit into the economy, which boosts economic activities. But in Nigeria, because we have been having this idea of appointing central bank governors from the commercial banking community, these central bank governors come in and do the bidding of their community, which is, which is commercial banking. Because you see what is happening in Nigeria is that if you take your money to the bank to save, the bank is going to give you an interest rate of about 2%, 3%. If you try, you get at 5%. And then when you go to borrow money from the bank, you are seeing interest rate of 30%. Imagine from 5% that they are paying to the person who brought the money, to 30% to the person who has come to borrow the money, 25%. And that is why the banks in Nigeria keep declaring humongous profits. Even during the time of COVID, they were declaring humongous profit because they have been allowed to do as they like. A responsible government will say this. Don't charge more than X amount of interest above the 
interest you are paying on savings. So if a bank is paying interest on savings of about 5%, then you give them a spread of, say, about 3 to 5% max. That means any loan that that bank gives cannot be more than 8 to 10%. That is what, what you do. And once we now have this single-digit interest rate in Nigeria, you will see more people borrowing money to build houses, whether for themselves or for commercial purposes. And that is where the supply of houses in Nigeria will start increasing. And the more houses that we supply in Nigeria, the less the rent will become. The other thing is that in all cities in Nigeria, go about in all cities in Nigeria, in Abuja, Lagos, everywhere, you will see humongous housing projects that have been left there, finished, but nobody is living in it. But perhaps the people living in it are rats, cockroaches, and, and probably snakes. Why would government not pass a law to say that, look, if you don't occupy your house within a set time period, maybe three months or max six months, that house is going to revert into public custody and we're going to put tenants inside. That's another way you can deal with because there's no way Nigerians will be living in squalor when in the same country you have houses that are not being occupied. Look, I'll give you a good example. If you go to Abuja on your way from the airport, I think this is Constitution Avenue. You know, there are throws that are coming from the airport into the city of Abuja. One is Constitution Avenue, the other is Independence Avenue. I think it's the Constitution Avenue. When you pass the National Hospital, you are going to see these two high-rise buildings. They are the tallest buildings in Abuja. They are called the World Trade Center. And we've been seeing those buildings for the past five, probably eight, ten years. Nobody has lived inside. There's no sign of anybody living in those buildings. Why would the government of Nigeria allow something like that? You come to the Nigerian uh, the land, you build a humongous housing project like that, and just leave it. Why Nigerians? are living in squalor. So that's the one thing the government can do. The other thing the government can do is what you have said now. Let the government start improving on the public transportation system, including the rail. You see, with rail, people can live in a pardon. People can live in a Akure. People can live in a, in a, in, 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 even a, a, in, in neighboring states and work in Lagos. Because look, you can get on a train from Moray. Within 15 minutes on this fast train, you are in uh, Central Lagos. You are right there uh, 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 on the marina, or you are in Ikeja. You just step down, walk to your office, do your work, and then you come back, enter the train. Within 15, 20 minutes, you are back to where you are in Ondo State. You understand? So that is what you also do, meaning you decongest the cities. So people live outside and they go in and they do their work. So these are some of the measures that government can take to deal with this matter. These are fundamental measures. By simply just going to strangulate landlords and saying you cannot charge X amount of rent. I mean, look at how much the dollar is now. If I now build, if I, if I import building materials at high cost and build my house, then the government is coming to tell me that you cannot charge rent up to this amount. That will not work. That will discourage investment and it will exacerbate the issue instead of solving it. It's uh, going up. Um, well, that's what some people have said is the fact that um, there is this new awareness of, uh, of developers. They come, they buy your house, they develop it into something really magnificent and the rents will go up and no housing for common men. Should there not be a deliberate policy of government to provide housing for the people? Because it doesn't seem as if government is doing much in that sector. What they do is build some uh, houses and then sell it to the, highest, uh, to the people that can still afford to build their own houses. For instance, you build a two-bedroom uh, flat and then you're giving it out at 25 million. How many people will have 25 million to buy those houses? It's the same people that can build their own houses independently without having to uh, take from the government. Those are the people that still come to buy. So shouldn't there be a deliberate policy of that? Or do you think there's going to be a challenge if the government wants to embark on that? There has to be a deliberate policy by the government. 
of rent. That is why we have Ministry for Housing. We have Ministry for Housing to do specifically what you are saying. Now, let me answer your question in two parts. The first part is that you talk about you build a house that is, is worth 25 million. How many people have 25 million to buy the house? And that is precisely where the government needs to come in. The government needs to come in to make credit cheap so that people can take mortgage and buy houses. If you are a worker and you buy that house of 25 million with a mortgage, instead of paying rent, you will now be paying off your mortgage so that at your retirement, the house belongs to you. But if the worker is unable to assess mortgage and buy that house, there are only two things he can do. Is either he will continue to pay rent until he retires and he has no house of his own, or he will try to steal money and buy the house for 25 million, which is what fuels corruption in Nigeria. So the government must, by deliberate policy, ensure that there is cheap credit, especially in the housing sector, so that those who are building the houses have access to cheap credit, those who are buying the houses have access to mortgage, so that they can be paying their mortgage off instead of paying rent. If you do that, then there will be a boom in the housing sector. Meaning a lot of houses will be built and a lot of demand for housing will be there because those who ordinarily will not have 25 million to buy a house will now be able to buy a house using the mortgage facilities. That is number one. Number two, you will look at an economy like the UK government, as I speak to you today, is still supporting the people with housing. That is what you call social housing. So if you are a, a, a worker and you are on low income, the government helps you with your housing cost. And if you fall out of employment and you no longer have money to even pay rent, the government provides you housing in that UK. In fact, there are people in the UK that are living in hotels on the bill of government. Why? Because the government is yet to find a house for them and their families. So the government checks them into a hotel. This is how responsible a government can be to its people. So for the Nigerian government to have a ministry for housing, to have a central bank there, to have all these ministries, and they are not doing anything to support Nigerians to have their own houses, to own their own houses to boost the housing sector is grand failure and we expect the current government to do things differently okay um well let me use lagos again as an example lagos doesn't seem to have enough land for housing and i keep wondering why high-rise buildings is not a thing in lagos where government will come in and build houses very very high-rising houses and get accommodation for a lot of people. Some people say there, there are challenges uh, if you have to have buildings like that, for instance, like you have in New York. So the solution in Lagos now is to fill every fillable place, if I may use the word uh, fillable, uh, in Lagos State, which also poses a danger for flooding, a danger for being submerged in maybe the next 30 years, some parts of Lagos State, because they, they are practically doing everything on water, on the sea on places that they are not supposed to do that. What are those challenges that, sh that you see in Nigerian cities that they cannot go to high-rising uh, buildings? They're just doing small things. Everybody, if you have, you have money, you go and get land, and then you build your houses, and then the land is no more there for other things to be done. Are there challenges that the government cannot address? Uh, Singapore is a case study here. I have been to Singapore severally during my... ...the course of my time working for international work. is a country, it's, it's what you call a city-state. Mm. So... As you see Lagos, Lagos should have been the city, Lagos should have been the country. Yeah? That is also that means the country. So Singapore is a city, and Singapore is a country. They don't have any land. Singapore does no agriculture because they don't. Uh, 
apartment. So if you go to Singapore, almost every building in Singapore is a high-rise building. Almost every one of them. And after they have finished building up high-rise, they are now building down. So you go to a building in Singapore and you... You will see 10, 15 floors underground. 15 floors underground in Singapore. And that is the kind of thing we also need to do because even as Nigeria has land, we cannot continue spreading buildings on our land because we need this land for other purposes like farming. You know? So the reason why you are not seeing those high-rise buildings in Nigeria, I believe, is because the people don't have the capital to build such high-rise building. Building a high-rise building is, is a different ball game compared to building uh, a flat. And that is why those who don't have the capital, they attempt to build high-rise buildings, and we have been seeing cases of building collapse. In Nigeria, you know, and only come if the government takes the steps that I have earlier enunciated to enable cheap credit to be available to the housing sector, so that people who have the interest to build houses to are uh, good. We seem to be having some challenges with Nikagule right now. The audio quality is dropping and fast too. So maybe we'll have to uh, discontinue with that. But we were talking about the fact that uh, uh, there's been a, a spike in uh, prices of commodities and then rents as well because of the high interest rates in Nigeria. Uh, you go to the banks, you want to borrow some money. They interest rate is not only two digits, but uh, up to like 30% uh, of interest that will be put on the money that you are going to borrow, which is very, very sad for all of us because farmers need money to, uh, to do their farms. People need money to build houses, go to school, and so many other things. Money that you may not be able to get uh, immediately and you run to the banks and you cannot get anything. They are now like POS operators at the time of cash crunch, you know, where you go, you get 5,000 naira and then you pay 2,000 to get 5,000. In some places, 2,500 even to get 5,000 naira. That's how uh, the banks are operating right now. With such kind of interest, it is difficult for anybody to go to the bank. And so, like Nika Gule said, the only option left for you is to cut corners and make sure you make extra money. So it's either you're not dedicated to the work for which you are paid, uh, you want to do some other things because everybody talks about a different or many streams of income right now. And you're working full time, something that should not give you time to do a lot of other things, but your salary is not that much. And so what do you do? You cut corners, you do some fraudulent things while at work or um, leaving or neglecting that work to go and do something else that will give you money. Uh, that extra money that you so need. If it were possible for people in Nigeria to be sure that whenever they are, they are ill, they, or their people, their loved ones are ill, they go to the hospital, they get treatment, they know that if you, they want to go to school, they will go to school without any problems. They know that if they want to travel, there is that transportation system that will take them. Like Nick said, you can walk in Lagos but live in Akure because you have the trains that are working and all that. People will not even be talking so much about salaries because, I mean, what are you using uh, salaries to do? Well, um, we do hope that the government will look into the matter and make sure that the interest rate comes down to one digit. Even if it's 9%, but let it be one digit as against the 25-30% that you find everywhere else. And, you know, there are some people that, as individuals, will loan money to the people and charge less than that. Maybe you can collect like 50,000 naira for a planting season. I see that happening a lot in villages. You collect 50,000 naira to pay 70,000 at the end of the season. A season sometimes takes like five months. Uh, for rice season or yam planting season or cassava season and everything else. Um, so, well, or Nick, are you back? We couldn't hear you anymore. 
Yes, ma'am. Okay, can please. You hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Please continue with your thoughts uh, before we wrap up. Let's let's go back to what you were saying. Singapore is now building uh, down. Yes. Mm. Yes. So I, I was saying that uh, um, the people who have attempted to build high-rise buildings in Nigeria, because you you rightly raised the point that why is it that we are not seeing high-rise buildings in Nigeria? And I say that the, the, the reason why we're not seeing high-rise buildings in Nigeria like well, not to build high-rise buildings, but they have stopped that now. People are building high-rise buildings there now. The reason why we're not seeing that in Nigeria is the access to capital. Building a high-rise building is an expensive uh, venture. And the capital is not there because, like you rightly said and you were discussing in your own analysis, the interest rates are too high. At 25%, 30%, there's nothing that is going to happen in the economy. The can survive by that kind of interest rate. So people who have attempted to build high-rise buildings in Nigeria, you, you see the incidence of uh, building collapse. Because without adequate cap, uh, capital, they are now trying to cut corners. They are now putting a, 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 a sham project in place. And that is coming at high cost of, of, of lives. And, and the money that has been invested lost. So definitely Nigerian government needs to support the housing sector. We cannot have a ministry of housing. And then that ministry of housing is uh, doing nothing. Also, it, it shouldn't be that the ministry of housing is not going to go and build their own houses. Anytime government builds houses, I have seen the evidence of federal low-cost housing projects in Nigeria that were never occupied by anybody. They build these houses, they keep them, and the houses to rot in situ where they are. What the government needs to do through a ministry of housing is to create the enabling environment for people to build houses, whether they are developers on commercial basis or their personal houses that they want to build. Then build their own houses. And that can only come through cheap credit in the, in the sector. And those who want to buy their own houses, they should buy their own houses with mortgages. If a, if a worker buys their own house with a mortgage, instead of paying rent, they will pay their mortgage over time. After 20, 25 years, the house becomes their own. So they are retiring into their own home. This is the simple thing that needs to happen. And I, and I was hearing you in your own analysis, and you were very right in terms of your analysis. Because let, let's look at uh, an example of the UK. I talk about the UK because I live there too. So I, I'm a participant uh, observer. I experience an economy. I'm not, I'm not talking about theory. This is what I'm experiencing because I, I have a residence there. In the UK, you have rightly said it. Workers in the UK, they pay nothing for health care out of their salaries. Because the government is providing health care at the primary, secondary, and tertiary levels for free. For everybody. The people in the UK, the workers in the UK, they pay nothing for education because government is providing education for free all the way to high school. It is only university education that is paid for. And if you don't want to pay for it, the students have, uh, the students have I mean, uh, uh, easy access to student finance where they can, they can, they can finance their education. And once they, they take student finance, they don't start repaying it back until they start any money at a particular threshold. If so, if that student doesn't uh, start work, they will never pay that loan. You know, the, the, the people in the UK are enjoying f uh, security from government. They don't have to employ their own MIGAD or bring their own armed security and all of that, no, or have vigilante. Government is providing effective security for them. The people in the UK, I can, I can tell you now that children travel free on public transportation. And senior citizens, that is those who are, I think, 65 years and above, travel free on public transportation. You know, there are many other things that the government is providing that is making workers not to pay for out of their salaries. And then workers have this cheap access to credit on mortgage rates that are less than 5%. To buy their own home. This is how you 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 create the enabling environment for your citizens to enjoy life. We are all in this country for just some uh, a few years, not more than probably a hundred years. And why would the government allow Nigeria to suffer so much? 
each day of their lives. The current government, they made promises, they must live up to those promises. We seem to be, uh, to, to be in a time where we pray for everything. You pray that uh, in the morning there will be, or in the night there will be light or right, throughout. You pray that the roads will be good and safe. You pray that uh, you are going to be paid your salary. We pray everything in this nation is prayer, prayer, prayer. We do hope that one day these prayers will materialize. I'd like you to just talk to Nigerians as we wrap up. Talk to Nigerians um, if you were to, to talk to an ailing Nigerian, a suffering Nigerian, what would you say? Is there hope? Is there no hope? Uh, what kind of things do you feel they should do? What kind of mindset are you giving to Nigerians this morning? A final word, please. Uh, well, my message to Nigerians is that let's keep hope alive. There is hope. For the fact that we woke up today, I'm on TV here, you are watching me. Uh, that's a big thing because if we didn't wake up, then all hope would have would have been lost. So uh, let's keep hope alive, but let us accompany those we have elected through the governance process. Let us not give up and say, let us wait for 2027. No, 2027 is still four years away. Let us close mark, close mark our elected leaders. Because in those places where our young people are jumping to, that is what the citizens do. If you go to London today, I can assure you that there are no less than 20 to 30 different groups protesting at the Parliament Square. MPs are getting letters written to them by their citizens. In fact, it is the mood of the citizenry that makes the leaders not to misbehave. Because they know that if they misbehave, the citizens are watching them and the citizens will come after them. So let us not sit docile and be praying and be expecting that good things will happen to us. We must be participants in the governance process. We must know our rights and we must call for those rights and we must ask for those rights. If a federal legislator or a state legislator is not working for us, is not doing what we need, record them. Start the record process. By beginning a record process alone, you would have said, a message to that legislator to behave well and all those he has appointed to work with him. That's the way we can build in Nigeria that will work for all of us. All right. Thank you so much, Nika Gule, for coming on the program and giving us your thoughts. It's been a pleasure having you today. Thank you so much. A nice day to all. Mm. Okay, that's, that was Nika Goulet, um, a public affairs analyst, uh, talking to us about the fact that the interest rate has gone high and, and that means the resultant effect is in rents, it's in goods and services and so many other things. So uh, cost of living has become very high now. So stop giving cheap tenancy titles to people who obviously steal our money. Give it to people who are people of integrity. Let integrity reign uh, supreme rather than uh, kleptomania. Well, we'll leave you with these words of Red Butler. He says, never pass up new experiences, they enrich the mind. We do hope that the experiences you're having now, no matter how difficult they are, you will take them and make sure they enrich your mind, give you more wisdom to thrive. It's been a wonderful time having you on behalf of the entire team of The Breakfast this morning. We'd like to say thank you for being there. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Let's do it again tomorrow.